Thank you. I'm Mr. Laner, and welcome to Mr. Laner's Math Extravaganza. In today's webisode, we're going to take a look at building on factors and multiples. Basically, taking what we learned in class and kind of applying it to a couple of real life situations. So, let's take a look at a couple of example problems on how we can use factors and multiples to assist us in different types of questions. Here's our problem up at the front board. As part of a carnival, the school will hold a factor game marathon, much like the factor game you played in class. It takes Dominic and Jacob an average of 12 minutes to finish one game. About how many games will they finish if they play non-stop non from 9 a.m. till 2.30 p.m.? Okay, when we're working with word problems, the first thing I like to do is kind of break it down, take it sentence by sentence, and I ask myself two questions. What information are they giving me? And what am I trying to find out? Okay, so let's look at the important information. Part of the carnival, eh, that's not, not too important. Um, knowing that it's the factor game marathon, eh, not too important. Okay, it takes Dominic and Jacob an average of 12 minutes to finish one game. There's my first important fact. So I know that in 12 minutes, they will finish one game. Okay, and then how about how many games will they finish if they play nonstop from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m.? Well, here's what they're asking me to find. They want to know about how many games they will finish if they play from 9 till 2.30. So, I know that one game takes 12 minutes. There's different strategies you can use to solve this problem. I'm just gonna show you one that I came up with. You may have one that's totally different, and that's perfectly fine. Remember, like we've talked about, the more strategies you have, the better. So if you have something different, awesome. We'll see if we come up with the same answer. In my method, I looked at how it took one game for 12 minutes. So if each game takes 12 minutes, the students can play five games in one hour because 12 minutes times five games equals 60 minutes. You may have used multiples here. You may have, say, may have said to yourself, one game is 12 minutes, two game is 24 minutes, three game is 36 minutes, four games is 48 minutes, and then five games would be 60 minutes. Well, 60 minutes is one hour, and I just use my multiples of 12 to figure that out. I always make sure I write the units in there, so I said 12 minutes times 5 games so that I know what does the 5 stand for, what does the 12 stand for, and I know that I can get 5 games in 60 minutes. Okay, then I broke this down a little bit differently. I'm going to wait to do the half. I'm going to take a look at the 9 to 2. So I looked from 9 to 2 and I know that that would be 5 hours. Okay, well if I can play 5 games in 1 hour, I can multiply 5 hours times 5 games and I know that 25 games I can play in these five hours. Or think of it this way with multiples. One hour is five games, two hours is 10 games, three hours is 15 games, four hours is 20 games, and then five hours would be 25 games. So again, you can use your multiples in there to help you um, with this part. But I also have the 30 minutes left over. So what I did here with 30 minutes being left over still, I said they can finish two full games because Two games times 12 minutes equals 24 minutes. Therefore, the students can play 27 complete games in the five and a half hours. 25 games in the first five hours and two more full games in the next half hour. Now, you may be sitting there at home and say, well, wait a minute, I said 28 games. 28 games would be an acceptable answer as well. They wouldn't have finished the 28th game, but they would have started it. So if you came up with 27 games, or 28 games, either one would work for this problem. And hopefully, like I said, if you used a different strategy, that may have worked as well. This is just one strategy that I used. Again, for me, I like to take it step by step. What is the problem, uh, information is the problem giving me, and what is the problem asking me to solve? Okay, here comes the fun part. Now, I'm gonna have you guys do it. It is now your turn at home to try this problem. It says, Mr. Lehner is reading a book. He finished the book on Friday. On Monday, he read 27 pages. On Tuesday, he read 31 pages. On Wednesday, he read 28 pages. On Thursday and Friday, he read the same number of pages each day. The book has 144 pages. How many pages did he read on Thursday? So, make sure you have your paper out. Make sure you get a pencil ready to go. Go ahead and pause this video, and we're going to see what you come up with for this problem. Okay, hopefully when you analyze this problem, you looked at what information was important.
okay, I know that I finished this book on Friday, okay, I read 27 pages on Monday, 31 on Tuesday, and 28 on Wednesday. Okay, that was important information. On Thursday and Friday, I read the same number of pages each day. So on Thursday and Friday, those two pages are going to be equal, the number of pages that I read. What are they asking me to find out? Oh, I missed a point there. See, sometimes teachers make mistakes too. I also need to know that there's 144 pages total. That will definitely affect the problem. I want to make sure I have that in there. Now, what are they asking me to find? How many pages did I read just on Thursday? Again, there's multiple strategies you may have used. I'm going to show you mine. If you had one that was different at home, that's perfectly fine uh, as well. Here's what I decided to do. I said that Mr. Lader read 86 pages from Monday through Wednesday because I added 27 pages plus the 31 pages plus the 28 pages on those first three days of the week. And that equaled 86 pages. So out of the 144, I've already read 86 of those pages. Then I knew that there was 144 total. So what I did is I subtracted the 86 pages I already read from my 144 pages. And that left me with 58 pages left. So I still had to read 58 pages on Thursday and Friday. But it said on Thursday and Friday I read the same number of pages each day. Well, I know that those are two days there. So I can cut the amount of pages I have left into two days. So if I have 58 pages total, I'm going to divide that by 2 to split it up into 2 days. That's going to leave me with 29 pages each day. So Mr. Lanner read 29 pages on Thursday. Again, I want to answer specifically what the question asked me to find. It didn't say Thursday and Friday. It just wanted to find how many pages I read on Thursday. Again, using factors, using multiples, using different operations. You can see in this one I used addition. I use subtraction, I use uh, division here to figure this out. Again, when you're working out these word problems here, you want to make sure you take your time and read the question. If you try and read it all at once, I know for me it gives me a headache and then I'm like, I have no idea what to do. What does the question ask me? Break it down. List the important facts first and what you need to know, and then what are they asking you to find? If you follow those rules, uh, hopefully it will make this a little bit easier when you're working with these real life situations. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Lander's Math Extravaganza, and as always, we'll see you next time.